but right now we're at, uh risha risha shout out to you thank you so much for being here we see you and right now we get to the interview we get to meet our guests for today and know what they are all about come on yeah, let's you have that. something else to say before that no somebody here just move mm -hmm. says uh he throws out a shout out says thanks for playing great hits mm -hmm. keep it up okay mm -hmm. we love it Love to see it. All right, so our guests, they're not new to the show. They've been here before, but that was a while back. <laughs> it's been a few years. It's been a few years. So we're going to do a recap. Let's know where they've been. But if you're meeting them for the first time, they are a three-piece rock metal band from Nairobi, Kenya. And because the band was formed in 2017, and they have a second album since 2017. Imagine they have a new album out. Two albums, just in a span of like, you know what, four years? Five years. That's really dope. So, can we meet our guests for today? Let's put our hands together and welcome Straight Line Connection. Yeah, yeah, Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> That's up? pretty dope. How are you guys doing? Good, good. Man, always good nice to, to see be, you. Nice to be back. Love your energy as always. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think it goes well with rock and roll. It doesn't go well with everything, but yeah. <laughs> Thanks. So, all right. So, this gun. There's Deno, there's P-Man, but I'm going to let you guys reintroduce yourselves, just probably, and tell us a little bit about Straight Line Connection for the guys who are here, who are not here the last time you guys dropped by. Well, I'm, like you said, I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and what you do for the band? I know, but you yeah, can just I will, tell I'm, uh, I'm the guitarist and vocalist mm. for the band. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, cool. Deno Bassman. He's the bassist. Yeah. Le wana story me give me story no bassman. No story me rap. And then of course we have P man. Yeah, I'm P man. I'm the drummer. I keep them in time, but I don't keep time. So. <laughs> so it's a blind dude, the blind. Dude. <laughs> I know, but it's so great to see him and talk. Like you know, even at events, he's always like just drumming and all that. He, he doesn't talk to people a lot. Like I'm so shocked. Like me and him could vibe, but then like I could just see him. He just he's just like by himself with his drums or just like he's just keeping it by himself. So it's good to see you. Like uh, yeah, yeah. So whatever you do today, do that every day. Okay, I'll try. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So uh, story and connection, man. It's been a couple of years. Uh, Tell us about the journey. How has it been? I know it's been a couple of ups and downs. Yeah. So yeah, take us I mean, through. Well, first of all, he does keep time. So that's... Uh, I saw <laughs> that. When you said he got here at the same time. Like, he was driving in and I'm, I'm just like coming in and I'm like, oh, wow. Yeah, I was a bit embarrassed by that. But thank you for keeping time. It's a good thing. <laughs> See, I mean, we've, uh, we've been busy um, for the last couple of years. I mean, obviously, it was COVID. Yeah. Uh, that hit everyone pretty hard and stuff and uh, you know, everything kind of um, slowed down but then during COVID uh, we actually met up with Deno mm -hmm. and uh, he brought a different kind of sound to our to, to our music a more uh, rounded sound mm -hmm. um, and we were working on a second album called Out the Vengeance and that's kind of testament to like symbolically how we're out the vengeance yeah. out, of, out of COVID mm -hmm. you know with Deno with, with a new sound with, with just a new kind of Outlook on the music, and uh, mm -hmm. hopefully a better, a better, a better album. Awesome! And thank you for you know explaining that. I, I really wanted to know out of the vengeance. I'm like, who are you out to get? <laughs> like, <laughs> should we run for what? You, <laughs> you know, Jack yeah. Kava, like they're out with vengeance, man. Like it's great, but I now that I know what it means, yeah. it's really absolutely dope. And uh, Deno came in later. We ha you had another big bassist so and he just he blended in so quickly so fast like was it uh, hard or was it just easy for him to you know for you guys to sink and just like carry on I think I'll let them know yeah I mean, first of all I was, I was just uh, starting out playing bass mm. so you know and then I joined uh, straight line connection and I, I don't know we we hit it off <laughs> so to hit speak it out pretty quick <laughs> yeah yeah that was and very quick and even just even learning the, the, the new, you know, the SLC style and, you know, we do a lot of uh, offbeat mm -hmm. stuff, so that was new and that was exciting. Yeah. So, and, yeah. 
So do you, of us do you like struggle a little bit? Because Bindelo was here a yeah. while back. He's also part of another brand. Can we sleep? Shout out to Nekesa. She's in studio, of course. So how do you even balance that? Because you know, straight line up here, metal, yeah. Yeah. and then can we sleep is a bit laid back. Yeah. So how do you do that? Does it come to you naturally? Do you struggle with it? I mean, it's a lot of practice, first mm -hmm. of all, you know. Uh, we are, as SLC, we are consistent, you know, we meet every week, we, we jam, we, you know, we exchange ideas so it's it's all about persistency you know and mm. consistency mm -hmm. that's all it's all about yeah yeah all right Pima, like when you guys started you said like um your your uh, what is it called like the the whole idea of you coming together was to make sure you bring rock and roll to the forefront mm. to make sure that uh, rock and roll becomes more mainstream than it than uh, it already is mm. So are we still with that? Are we working towards that? So what are we doing to make sure we accomplish that? No, that's definitely the idea. Mm -hmm. I mean, we still want to keep pushing rock and metal within East Africa and, you know, build the scene over here. Mm -hmm. That's why we've been consistently practicing. We want there to be more rock events. Mm -hmm. We yeah. take time to do music videos just to put content out there right. for yeah. the viewers, the listeners, the fans, and even people who are not so much into rock. Maybe try grab a few of them in and mm -hmm. if they like the music. Of course, they're going to yeah. love them. How can you not? <laughs> <laughs> they just don't like because a lot of people what I came to realize, they're like, no, I don't like rock because they haven't given it a chance. Mm. But once you drag them to one of the events, they're like, whoa, that's like one of the coolest yeah, things yeah. ever. Like, and then yeah. they're like, where is the next one? Yeah. They just, that they're like, they're, they're afraid just because they haven't. People are always afraid of the unknown, what they don't know. Oh, yeah. But yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. You see, the, yeah. yeah, the good thing with rock shows, they're always live. You can't Life. have you can't have someone lip syncing a rock show. Thank you. And everyone, Thank you. everyone loves live music. Oh, yeah. no I keep telling people that. Is, yeah. Everyone loves live music. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's live music, and, and imagine having a rock show where you see where you see gun right here, like just on the hash vocals and like growling and all that, and you think it's pre-recorded. It's not. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually super live, and that's what I love about it. You can't fake it. Like you can fake it in maybe probably other genres, yeah. but in rock music. Music, either you know or you don't like oh, yeah. you cannot you cannot just be there and you fake it and that's really amazing we love that and you are the first band in East Africa to have full length a full length album yeah I, so yeah, mm -hmm, yeah. It, we're the first I would say hard rock not the first band yeah we're the first hard, hard rock, rock. Uh, alt metal band mm. to have two full length albums yeah in East, Af East and Central Africa yeah so I, I saw that and was like oh wow so yeah. Probably you tell us about that because I, I understand the words I'm seeing, but I'm like, what does that mean? <laughs> okay, so, I mean so, so two full-length albums. So an album consists of at least eight songs yeah, true. and at least about 40 minutes in length. Mm -hmm. there's, many, there's many bands that have EPs that are five, six songs. <clears throat> so we fall into, first of all, fall into that full album, full-length album category. Yeah, because of the time. Yeah. yeah the time, the number of songs, yeah, the number of songs. and all that stuff. Uh, so we're the first hard rock band to have done that, uh, but I mean our our music is hard rock, hard rock slash metal, metal as well. Yeah. But we're not like full on. But even metal has many subgenres. Mm. So There's a lot. There's like, so many subgenres. More than a yeah. hundred. <laughs> so I was many. so surprised. Yeah. Yeah. I thought there was just five because if you asked me, I was like, oh, there's doom, yeah. there's death, yeah. there's, and I'm like, oh wow, yeah. there's yeah. like a hundred. There's so like, many. It's so sludge hard. metal, yeah. doom metal, it's heavy yeah. metal, it's yeah. so yeah. many. So I would say hard rock slash heavy metal. Mm -hmm. uh, the first hard rock slash heavy metal band. Because we also have some hard rock so songs that are not so metal, then we have some that are more heavy metal. So yeah. we don't know where we are. Well, yeah. Are we metal or rock? <laughs> 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 I think on the metal side, a little bit on the metal side, I think. Hard rock and yeah. metal, I think that describes it. Yeah. But on the alternative side, I don't know. I don't know about all it's about. So alt, alt metal is, um, alt metal is alt, another subgenre of metal. Yeah. Basically, yeah. Okay. But I'm liking that. And uh, another thing is that um, you guys have, you, within that span of period, you've been able to do all these time, all, all these, like, uh, the first album was um, Spaceless, yeah. and then now Out With Vengeance, right? Within, like, uh, five years. Yeah. We have bands that go up to, like, ten yeah. years yeah. before they even give you just, like, even, a, you know, like, two singles or something. So, how are you guys able to do that? What's your secret? I think, I think like Deno said, it's uh, persistence, but I think more than that is discipline. Mm -hmm. Like one of our missions, like you correctly pointed out, is to get 
Um, rock in general, whether it's hard rock, soft rock, metal or whatever, in general, mm. our mission is to get that out to the okay. for forefront mm -hmm. as much as possible. It, I don't think metal will ever be mainstream, yeah. but as much as possible, get all those in the closet rockers out there mm -hmm. in Kenya who are hiding and, and then like you, like you pointed out, you know, when they come to the shows, they're like, wow, this is amazing yeah. to the exposure. Mm -hmm. So it's discipline. Um, once a week or at, 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 at the very least once every couple of weeks we meet up and we jam. Um, so yeah, we're working on new stuff already. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> they just yet to launch this album, and they're already working on new stuff. Like I cannot even imagine. Either you have like a lot of just pouring in you, like you just have like these lyrics. That, you see, like in the Matrix, like how, like I feel like that's how it is. Like you just have like a lyrics just dropping like this. Like you just, have, or you're just like super. Thousand recordings on my phone. Of just little, little, little. You know, when you have a riff in, yeah. in the mind, <laughs> recorded. Oh wow! Yeah, we have, um, yeah, we have a lot of. Content. I can't even imagine that. That's like a lot. So, so how how do you come up with that? Like when it comes to songwriting, is it like a joint effort? Are you just specifically the one who does it because you're the vocalist? Most people always assume it's the vocalist who is like composes songs. So and I think all with that. different bands is different. Mm -hmm. um, some bands, you know, they'll just come and jam and see what comes up. Mm -hmm. I have just so much stuff in my head. Yeah. And, and when we, whenever we jam and we're like, okay, guys, what do you think? I have a riff here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What yeah. do you think of this? And then yeah. we just kind of, okay, they'll be like, then they, and then then we jam on the riff. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. we see where it goes. Yeah. Um, the vocals actually, interestingly, for us come at the end. Yeah. But first is first is the jamming, the, the music, jamming the instrumental. The, yeah. 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 A lot of rock artists that actually try that and they feel like, it. especially when you get on stage and you just get people's attention or before yeah. the vocals come in, you just like jamming and everybody has just come to the front now. They Now they are ready. They want to see what is about to go down. And so I think it's a good thing. And being able to do that on stage and this also in studio when you're recording, it's very different from a lot of other people. Imagine if you had a mainstream song that is just like, they just like, you know, just like drums and all that. Are people, I don't think it will work in other genres. It's gonna be, it, it's hard. Because yeah. they don't have a lot of uh, instrumentals in most songs. So they just rely on vocals a lot. So I can mm -hmm. imagine a mainstream, a mainstream song that is just like, and it's just basically the guitar, they don't do a lot of drums and, mm. <laughs> you know, so it's crazy, but it's awesome at the same time. And uh, before we talk about the album, of course, Piman has to talk to us about this, because Deno has been here too much. We, today, <laughs> okay. Piman, you okay. have to talk to us a lot. But I want to talk, <laughs> talk about Undertow, uh, which is amazing. We, we talked to Max from Rush about it, and I know you're, um, he's one of the co-founders, but mainly you came up with it, so maybe you can talk to us about that. For those who don't know, and the toys is um, it's a series yeah. of uh, rock events, right? Yeah. And we actually we were the last one. Max played, and I was hosting, and it was so dope. So, and this guy right here is the one of he's literally the founder. So you can tell us about that. Yeah, I, I mean, we're, we're, like it falls into our mission mm -hmm. of bringing rock and metal into the forefront, and Undertow is. Um, it's an underground event, mm -hmm. you know, that's where Undertow comes from and then me and Max got together and we're like, let's, you know, let's give a chance to all the bands, all the rock bands, mm -hmm. all the rock DJs, anyone that has some sort of rock affiliation and it doesn't, you know, it's anything underground, it can even be underground rap, yeah. who knows, it can, but the whole idea of Undertow is right at the moment mostly rock and metal and we have it every three months. Yeah. Um, so far, very suc successful. Very successful. Yeah, yeah very, it's going very, very successful, well. Yeah. I and mean, we're very happy. The sound system at Shelter, where we do Undertow, is amazing. It is amazing. Incredible sound system. One of the best that, that I've, we've experienced mm -hmm. ever mm -hmm. in yeah. our gigging life. Yeah. So definitely something to check out for those who've never gone to an Undertow event. The next one, I mean, we just had one a couple yeah. weeks ago. Yeah. yeah. But the next one is probably coming up um, in Feb sometime, yeah. end of Jan, beginning Feb, somewhere there. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, if you guys haven't been there, check out Undertow and we're on Instagram. Okay. Alright, and uh, speaking of Undertow, they know uh, with his other band, Can We Sleep got to play for the first time as the band. How was that? Was it exciting? And seeing just uh, the reception of the fans that are there, how, how did that make you guys feel? I mean, it, was a, it was a good opportunity and you know, like Gunn said, uh, First time we played there as a maybe we upcoming band, mm -hmm. an underground band, mm -hmm. and uh, I mean we had fun, we had fun, and I think the the fans had fun. Uh, they did. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, 
I'm one of them, and yeah. I was right there. And I remember Pete saying, like, I don't think these guys actually understand how good they are. I don't think they know they are good because they are really good, but I don't think they know it. We need to tell them for them to know. <laughs> so, yeah, that That's was fun. really dope. Shout out to Nekesa, man. Like the, I think she's like one of the best vocalists we have in Kenya right now. She needs to be hard. She, people need to know all about her. Yeah. She's dope. And p -Mine, talk to us about the album. I'll be vengeance. We know what that means, but you have a launch coming up. Give us all the details. So it seems you're out with a vengeance on I me know. today. I do. <laughs> <laughs> for being silent for too long. <laughs> <laughs> well, out with a vengeance, to me, is... I mean, we've been through a once-in-a-lifetime pandemic, you yeah. know, which is very rare. And now it's time to let's, let's come out. Let's move past all this. Mm. See, a lot of the songs in this album talk about some of the ups, the downs, you know, love, all these things, emotions you're experiencing. Mm. And a lot of the messages we want to push is, you know, get up there, get out there, come out with a vengeance. You know, there's, you can't hold yourself back in mm. this small space that you've been put. So just give it all you've got and come out with that vengeance okay. and you'll make something of yourself. And that can literally apply to anything, whether it's working out, whether it's just motivation through life, you're trying to get back there. Yeah, I think it just, it cuts across. Whether it's a breakup. <laughs> whether it's a breakup, yeah, you know, yeah. trying to get over someone. <laughs> And you see, another thing, a lot yeah. of the underlying themes are to do with history, warrior tribe. You know, many of us mm -hmm. have, our forefathers have all fought as freedom fighters and mm. in different situations. And you know, it's, don't, don't leave that behind. Fight for yourself as well now. And the you culture. Know, yeah, your culture, culture bring it out there. Mm -hmm. See, everyone's different in their own way. And... If you don't all come out with a vengeance, mm -hmm. how will you get to know, how will that culture be brought out in yeah. a very vibrant way? So that even the next generation knows about it. Yeah. They know where they come from. Yeah, that's, because culture is being deep. lost genera yeah. generation mm. generationally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is. It's true. It's true. Some people don't even know who their grandparents were. Like, yeah. forget even the great, great, great. They don't know who they are great. Because you were born when yeah. they were not there anymore. They you can't don't even speak their mother to tongues. Think. You know, it's just slowly dwindling away. Especially yeah. as Kenyans. <laughs> you, you know those people who are like, Naskia, like, you see, you You know? <laughs> so that's actually true like it, it's a good reminder and you've spoken to us about uh, that's the second uh, so at least with the visuals of the album the ones yeah. that is a new, okay um the album how many songs on the album uh we have eight songs eight songs yeah. so the first one was uh Jalan, the jalanda the first release the first uh, we released a single called jalanda yeah, yeah. that's the first one yeah. and uh the second one with the visuals is the one he just talked about warrior tribe and jalanda i know uh for Gan, it's very um it's personal, personal. Yeah. yeah so mm -hmm. Uh, it's about your dad, yeah, so maybe you can yeah. shed some light on that just a little bit if it's not too much. It's, yeah, no, it's just uh, just briefly, Jalandar is uh, from the area my dad came from, mm -hmm. <clears throat> moved to Kenya and uh, you know, basically he just gave us everything unconditionally. Mm -hmm. He passed away a few years ago, so That's it was just, it's just, just a thank you, it's just a song of rem remembrance really, yeah. Alright, yeah. awesome, it's good to do that, like um, I, th I see how it relates with the uh, warrior tribe. Yeah. You see, it relates in a way. Yeah. It's kind of like the history is coming mm. back. You know? well, like you said, and out the vengeance is, is very, very simply put as, you know, coming out of the out of the lows. Right. Yeah. You know, any, any sort of low. Yeah. yeah. Together. And unfortunately, because of time, like I don't even know where time goes. Like we're here, and it's you know. <laughs> One thing though, we, we do want to mention is we have an album launch. Yes, coming. that's what I want to yeah. talk about. Like before we go, you have to give us details. Where is it going to be? Yeah. The tickets, where people can get the tickets, uh, and uh, yeah, give us all the details. Yeah, so we're doing a, a mega album launch party. It's mm -hmm. a multi-genre party. It's got obviously very rock heavy, mm -hmm. definitely. But we have a we also have a female rapper. Oh. So, and we also have like DJ Juggy who's going to play some, you know, just some normal after party stuff. Mm -hmm. It's going to be held at The Craft in Westlands, which is just opposite Shelter. Oh! It's on Electric Avenue, basically, in Westlands. Okay. And tickets you can buy on MOOC. Oh, wait, that's Electric. Uh, okay, you said The Craft is at a? 
Opposite yeah, shelter. Yeah, just opposite to the shelter. Yeah. Okay. That, that area is, well, it used to be called Electric Avenue. I don't know oh, that Electric that. Avenue. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I wanted to get. I'm like, Electric Avenue? What? what? <coughs> I think it's Woodville. Woodville. Yeah, Woodville. Woodville. Yeah, Woodville. Yeah. Wood, it's called, the, the name of the road is Woodville Grove. Mm. And the name of the place is The Croft. Yeah. Amazing venue. Uh, ma- quite massive. Um, and tickets can be bought on MOOC.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you still have, have an offer for um, early bird? Yeah, I, I mean, early bird tickets are going fairly fast, uh, as you would expect, only 600 bob. Yeah, um, when I get mine right now, right after the show, like, <laughs> I don't want to miss it. I don't want to pay a thousand when I can pay yeah. 600, I mean. But we only have until tomorrow night for early bird. Oh! Um, and uh, I mean, they're getting sold fairly fast. But then after that, we'll still have the, the advanced, advanced ticket stage. Yeah. For, for 800 bob and then a thousand of the gig. Yeah. That's pretty fair if you, yeah. if you ask me, like it's super, super fair. Yeah. So make sure you get your tickets, go watch them on stage. I promise you will not, you will not, you will not, you will not complain. You're not going to be disappointed. They bring their A game, especially at the album launch. I remember the last one was right here at Museum Hill. Yeah, exactly. It was so dope. It was that man, like rockers go hard, I promise. All right, so uh, we're going to play, I think, um, uh, out of the Avenger. No, we actually played that. So we're gonna we played Out of the Avenger, but we can just play it a little bit and then uh, come back. Come back with more rock. We're still here for like probably ten minutes. I think we have like ten minutes. Yeah. Let's do that.